Okay, let's start. My name is Ubrikov Oleg Mikhailovich. For many years I have studied at the Faculty of Foreign Languages too, like you. And then today I, I'd like to demonstrate you a, a lecture on the Russian law section law system. I'm very glad to meet you all and I hope that after this lecture we will meet once more to discuss some practical questions after this theoretical material. Okay. Anglo-Saxon law system is a body of legal rules and customs which obtained in England before the Norman conquest and uh, which constitute with the Scandinavian laws the most expression to territorial legal thought. The early Germanic law named Legus Barbarorum, including that of the territory now called Germany, modern Germany, was largely the product of Roman influence. And I should say that the modern Russian law system uh, <clears throat> influenced by the Roman uh, law system too. The, the continuity of Roman life was almost completely broken in the British Isles. And even the church, the direct here of Roman tradition, didn't, uh, didn't carry on a continuous existence. Canterbury, for example, was not a sea formed uh, in a Roman province in the same sense as Tours or Reims in French. One of the striking expressions of this Teutonism is presented by the language in which the Anglo-Saxon laws were written. They are uniformly worded in English, while continental laws, apart from the Scandinavian, are, are all in Latin. In Latin nowadays too. The English dialect in which the Anglo-Saxon laws have been handed down is in most causes a common speech derived from West Saxon. Naturally enough, as Wessex became the predominant English state, in the court of its kings, the principal literary center from which most of the compilers and scribes derived. Traces of Kentish speech, of Welsh, uh, Welsh speech, however, in Textus Rafensis, the manuscript in uh, Northumbrian dialectual peculiarities are also noticeable on some occasions, which Danish words occur only as technical terms. At the conquest, Latin takes the place of English in the compilations made to meet the demand for Anglo-Saxon laws texts as still applied in practice. Uh, it is uh, rather easy to group the Anglo-Saxon laws according to the manner of their publication. They would fall into three divisions. First, laws and collections of laws promulgated by public authority. Second, statements of custom. Third, private compilations of legal rules and enactments. To the first division, laws and collections of laws promulgated by public authority belong the laws of the Kentish kings. Uh, the treaty between Alfred and Gethrum, there, there are two British kings, and the so-called treaty between Edward and Catherine. The second division is formed, I mean, states of custom. Custom, custom, uh, law of custom means in Russian tamuzhnebra. And this, this uh, second uh, division is formed by the convention between the English and English and the Welsh Dansaitis, uh, the law of the Northumbrian priests, the customs of the North people the fragments of local customers entire in Dummer's Day book. And uh, the third, private compilations of legal rules and enactments. 
this division would consist of the collections of the so-called Pseudolegis Canuti, the laws of Edward the Confessor, the Henry I, and the great compilation of some British jurists. I hope you understand what I what I read. Okay. Well, uh, what chapters? How many chapters uh, are in uh, Anglo-Saxon law system? Many chapters, more than three hundred. And uh, this uh, system of law is old as the British Empire itself. And the British people, the British Parliament, the British uh, jurists, uh, jurists are proud of it. Because during many, many centuries, the law system is not changed. And that is why they, they can be also proud of uh, historical, historical law and uh, they are proud of their traditions in law system too. And that is why we can say that um, the social norms and the juridical norms are combined during these many, many centuries. And uh, for example, the Russian law system is not so one because um, Russian Federation, earlier uh, Union, UDSSR and then uh, in, uh, Russian Empire these three systems of law has, uh, have changed and every time the people, the population <coughs> was, uh, was uh, want to learn to, to meet uh, every time uh, new social and judicial norms and the British people have, uh, have had this uh, responsibility to to develop the, uh, their system of law and um, without changing without changing during this time they have always lived uh, in neighborhood with their uh, judicial norms this uh, group of norms might be made of the charters uh, they are based on old English private and public law and supply us with most important uh, materials in regard to it. Looking somewhat deeper at the sources from which old English law was derived, we shall have to modify our classification to some extent and content too as external forms of publication, although important from the point of view of historical criticism, are not sufficient standards as to the judicial character of various kinds of material. Direct statements in Anglo-Saxon Anglo, uh, system of law would fall under the following heads from the point of view of their legal origins. First, customary rules followed by diverse communities capable of formulating law. Second, enactments of authorities, especially of kings. Uh, and the third, private arrangements made unrecognized legal rules. The, um, Brit Great Britain is a monarchy, one of the last monarchies in the world, and has been always so. And the judicial norms in the British Empire, of course, uh, have been always mm, uh, dependent on the institute of the British royalty, of the British kings, monarchs. And that is why the second position, uh, enactments of authorities, uh, especially of kings, is mostly and brightly um, and brightly uh, disposed perhaps this way in the British system of law. The first would comprise besides most of the statements of custom included in the second division according to the first classification. A great many of the rules entered in collections promulgated by kings most of the paragraphs 
um, a popular legal custom that have received the stamp of royal authority by their insertion in all official courts, uh, official courts, and uh, um, there are many codes of uh, rules of principles uh, and of um, juridical norms in modern um, Britain, and uh, we should. We should understand that every time we should went to banister or to a lawyer to explain, to interpret uh, for us some judicial norms, if uh, we need. And uh, it's just a rule which cannot be broken by the British people, by the Br British um, citizens. For, uh, for example, in Russian Federation, uh, every man uh, uh, who, is, uh, uh, who has arrived at uh, an age of eight, 18 years can uh, represent himself in the court. In the Britain Empire, it is not impossible. Because not impossible uh, while um, his responsibility, but is next to impossible because he doesn't know the um, things, these things connected actually with British uh, judicial norms. Matters which uh, th seem uh, to us primary are almost entirely absent in Anglo-Saxon laws or relegated to the background. A service is uh, rendered almost impossible by the arbitrary manner in which paragraphs are um, divided by the difficulty of making old English enactments fit into modern rubrics and by the necessity of multiple counting. But there is brief statistical analysis of the contents of rules, codes and laws. There are roughly 419 paragraphs devoted to criminal law and procedures laws, more than uh, 418 paragraphs devoted to the criminal law. It means that in, uh, in the social life, in the social practice, the British people do not uh, make some cr crimes more than 419, in more than 419 cases. It's a very interesting uh, statistic and practice in, the, in Great Britain. For example, in Russia, these cases of uh, crimes uh, are more than 1,000. For example, you can, if uh, some people, if some uh, people kill other peoples under or under the influence of some conditions, many, many uh, cases and positions. For example, if you want to, to go to United States of America to live there, it's, uh, there, are some, uh, there are more than 30 cases of judicial norms. Then, um, of the criminal law clauses, as many as 200, uh, 400, uh, 438 are taken up with tariffs of fines, while uh, 80 treat of capital on corporal punishment, our glory on confiscation, and 101 include rules of procedure. On the private law side, 18 clauses apply to rights of property and possession. 13 to succession and family law, uh, uh, 37 to contracts including marriage uh, when treated as an act of sale, 18 touch on civil procedure. The law of status had no less than 107 paragraphs, um, dictated by the wish to discriminate between the classes of society. I would like to ask you if someone of you is married now. No. Is someone, somebody married in this uh, audience? No. 
do you, uh, do you do you want to to go to marriage contract before the marriage? Only one? Why? Um, I think that uh, we live in a, um, in a modern in a modern world. Don't you trust your future husband or boyfriend? Um, I think that it's necessary and. Um, but why it's so it's necessary? It's for 100 in Russia, no one wanted to go to the marriage, ma marriage contract. But nowadays, more and more people would like to go to the marriage contract, to the marriage contract before the marriage itself. Is it uh, while? Is it uh, because you 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 don't trust the future husband? Or between, no. or while the difference between between the social uh, st status, social classes, it's it's a difficult life. It's difficult to live out nowadays. To live out, not to live, but live out, especially in our country, and that is why the people go to the marriage contract before. They have been, they have married each other. I think that's the first reason. The second, why I think really uh, it is a difference between the classes. Between the classes, perhaps, uh, for example, you are a representative of the middle class. Do you, uh, do you, do you, do uh, you, I think that it's very important nowadays to, ma uh, to marry the representative of your class. If you are a representative of the middle class, you would like to marry a representative of your class, or? No one things about it. How old are you? 18, 19, 20? 19. 19. Okay, I see. I see you are too young to think about it. Other thoughts in your heads? I hope you, uh, you know what to do after the study at our university. What do you want to do after the study at our university? Mary? No. no. What? Business? Will you work as a teacher? As a teacher? Foreign language teacher? No. But why are you here? To make a job better after the study? Another job? Ideas, young man. I think we must to find a nice job and uh, in the business or in the another systems. In other systems. Okay. Who wants to work uh, as a teacher? Hands mm -hmm. up, please. <laughs> no. Um. You. This profession is not so popular, I see, I understand, but I work as a teacher 19 years and I'm fond of this work, of this teaching yet, 19 years. I am 40 years old, I have a son who is a student too, but he's younger, he's 18 years old and he doesn't want to work. Uh, teach in the future and of course the future because we are uh, studying as a doctor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I think you know you will have a right to teach. Mm -hmm. no? No. 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 So no. Teach. Mm -hmm. I see. I think I can't I begin uh, working as a teacher, but then uh, 
I can I can go to the government job. Mm. And uh, perhaps you would like to work as a lawyer in the future. Mm. Maybe. Maybe. Why not? I see. Okay. Well. Questions of public law and administration are discussed, discussed in 217 clauses, while 197 concern the Church in one way or uh, another, apart from purely ecclesiastical collections. In the public law division, it's chiefly the power, interests and privileges of the King that are dealt with in roughly 93 parables, while local in, uh, administration comes in for 39, and purely economic and fiscal matter for 13 courses. Police regulations are very much to the fore and occupy no less than 72 clauses of the royal legislation. As to church matters, the most prophylic group is formed by general precepts based on religious and moral considerations, roughly 115, while secular privileges conferred on the church held about 62, and questions of organization some 20 or more closes. Uh, these statistical contrasts are especially sharp and characteristic when we take into account the chronological sequence in the liberation of laws. Practically, the entire court of Ethelbert King, for, insta uh, for instance, it is a tariff of fines for crimes and the sub subject continues to occupy a great place in the laws of Hedric, Hedric the King and, uh, uh, and Alfred both of the British of uh, Anglo-Saxon kings, whereas uh, it appears only occasionally in the treaties with the Danes. The laws that, uh, uh, which are um, in other countries, uh, in the countries of continental Europe. The system of compositions or fines paid in many cases with the help of kinsmen, finds its, its natural place in the ancient mm, tribal period of English history and loses its vitality later, uh, later on in, uh, in consequence of the growth of central power and uh, of the scattering of uh, mates. Reality, uh, reality and the church when they acquire the lead in social life, work out a new penal system based on outlawry, death penalties and corporal punishments which make their first appearance in the legislation of Israel and culminate in that of Alfred and Kennard. As regards status, the most elaborate enactments fall into the period preceding the Danish settlements. After the treaties with the Danes, uh, the tendency uh, is to simplify these distinctions on the lines of an opposition between 12 hind men or uh, 12 hind men paying the way towards the feudal distinction between the free and the unfree. And uh, uh, later, these uh, differences. Um, <coughs> We can look, we can see at the modern system of social differences between three uh, basically uh, social classes. Uh, the, the reign of um, Anglo-Saxon kings, which uh, witnessed the greatest national uh, humiliation and the greatest crime in English history, is also marked by the most lavish expressions of religious feeling in the most frequent appeals to morality. Uh, you, you see, uh, not only juridical and or corporate norms are involved, are at game, but uh, 
the vast majority of social, uh, religious, and uh, taboos um, uh, are important by the regulating of all aspects of social life. For example, it is not uh, important for for us, and we we cannot. Uh, Cry at someone who doesn't say you good afternoon or good morning every day. It's not a crime. It's not important to stand up when some people, when grown ups come in, for example. But uh, it's really important if we think about the history of these uh, relations and this relationship is as old as uh, a man it's, uh, himself. We, uh, it, become, it, it's, it has become a good tradition to stand up to when grown-ups come in, for example, or to when you say uh, everybody good afternoon, good evening, and etc. Many, many aspects of social life will be regulated by the social norms, not uh, by the judicial ones. This sketch would of course have to be modified in many ways if we attempted uh, to treat the unofficial fragments of customary law in the same way as the paragraphs of royal courts and even more uh, so we were um, able to tabulate the indirect evidence as to legal rules. Uh, with the time, sometimes some social norms uh, will be legal rules, but uh, we need uh, many, many years of social uh, practice. But uh, imperfect as such statistics may be, they give us at any rate some insight into the direction of governmental, gover governmental legislation. What can we uh, add uh, to influences of uh, Roman law, for example, or Anglo-Saxon uh, law? Uh, this question uh, to be approached concerns the um, pedigree of Anglo-Saxon law and the latter's natural affinities. Uh, what is its position in the legal history of Germanic nations? How far has, uh, has it been influenced by non-Germanic uh, elements, especially by Roman or Canon law? The oldest Anglo-Saxon courts, especially the Kentish and the West Saxon ones, disclose a close relationship to the barbaric laws of Lower Germany, those of Saxons, Frisians, and Thuringians. There are people, nations populated in the, uh, Europe. We, uh, we can find a division of social ranks which reminds us of the threefold gradation of Lower Germany. Edelings, Freelings, Lazen, Eros, uh, Keros, and uh, Lions, and not of the twofold Frankish one, no for mm, no uh, no of the minute um, <coughs> differentiation of the Upper Germans and Lombards. In subsequent history, there is a good deal uh, of re uh, resemblance between the uh, capitalist legislation of, uh, of Charlemagne and his successors uh, on uh, one hand the acts of some Anglo-Saxon kings uh, Alfred for example, Edward the Elder and, and other um, on the other hand um, a resemblance called forth, um, forthless forthless by direct parole in Frankish institutions. Um, on the next lesson, I think we um, 
should discuss these uh, questions uh, once more because um, this uh, lecture in this lecture I, I won't tell you about the continental law. Uh, Frankish law, так называемое франкское право, континентальное франкское право, Uh, Frankish law becomes a powerful modifying element in English legal history after the conquest. Conquest, uh, when it was introduced uh, wholesale in royal and in feudal courts. The Scandinavian invasions, I mean uh, Danish invasion, uh, I mean uh, Frisian invasion, brought in many northern legal customs, especially in the districts thickly populated with Danes. Uh, the Domesday uh, book, uh, the Domesday survey of Lincolnshire, Nottinghamshire, Yorkshire, Norfolk, and etc. shows remarkable deviations in local organization and justice. I mean, these uh, social rings uh, uh, such as slugmen and songs, and great peculiarities as to status, soapmen and freemen. Well, from laws and a few characters, we can perceive some influence on criminal law. Special usages as to fines, the keeping of peace, uh, attestation, and uh, sureties of acts. But on the uh, on the wall, the introduction of Danish on or and Norse elements, apart from local cases, was more important owing to the conflicts and compromises it called forth and its social results than on account of any distant tale of Scandinavian views in English law. The Scandinavian new newcomers calls said uh, easily and quickly with the native population. Now, uh, uh, everyone, every, uh, every, uh, every of us um, knows, I think, knows very well um, the um, nature and the details of native law. And when we uh, come or went to another country, this tradition will be brought with ourselves. And perhaps with the time when the invasion is rather big, our traditions can be or can be or they have some responsibility, some possibility to um, to become a native law system for other people around us. And uh, it uh, calls, it will be called as a multicultural law system, uh, multicultural, um, multinational uh, system of law. And uh, it's difficult on one hand and very useful on the other hand for the people. The direct influence of Roman law was not great during the Saxon period. You notice neither the transmission of important legal doctrines, chiefly through the medium of uh, uh, with Gothic courts, nor the continuous theme of Roman tradition in local usage. Now, perhaps uh, it's why it uh, uh, perhaps it uh, it uh, depends on this fact, on this reason that the British British Empire, the British Kingdom, is uh, are ter territorialized uh, on the islands, perhaps. It's uh, one of the reasons. Indire indirectly, Roman law did exert um, a 
by no means insignificant influence through the medium of the church. This uh, uh, channels, these channels, these ways, I mean, uh, things and through the church are more effective um, as a pure judicial possibility to integrate in some uh, law system. And that is why uh, the Anglo um, the Saxon law system was influenced indirectly by the Roman law. For all, first of all, its insular character was still permitted to the Roman ideas and forms of culture. The old English books, codes, old English books, old uh, English uh, codes are deri derived in, uh, in a roundabout way from Roman models, as the tribal law of real property was deeply modified by the introduction, especially of, by the Roman civil law. Yet, uh, in this respect, also the Norman conquest increased the store of Roman conceptions by breaking the national isolation of the English church and opening the way for closer intercourse with France and Italy. It would be uh, as far as I can judge, it, it would be uh, useless to attempt to trace in a brief sketch the history of the legal principles embodied in the documents of uh, Anglo-Saxon law, but it may be of some value to give an outline of your particularly characteristic subjects. What can we say, what can we add uh, to folk right and privilege? Uh, Point, points. The Anglo-Saxon legal system cannot be understood unless one realizes the fundamental opposition between folk right and privilege. Folk right and privilege will be translated into Russian uh, as Prava Narodov и Privilegi. Мы здесь не затрагиваем uh, естественно правовую концепцию, да? Folk right is the aggregate, is a, a combination of rules formulated or attained by a susceptible of formulation which can be appealed to, to as the expression of the judicial uh, uh, concepts of the people at large or the communities of which, is, of which it, it's composed. Communities, large groups, um, socially ranked or uh, communities. It is tribal in its origin and uh, uh, large and differentiated, uh, 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 differentiated uh, not according to boundaries between states, but on national and provincial lines. Uh, there may be the folk right of West and East Saxons, of East Angles, of uh, Kentish men, uh, Northumbrians, Danes, Welshmen and these main folk right divisions remain even uh, when tribal kingdoms disappear and the people and the people is uh, concentrated in one or two realms. The chief centers for the people, uh, the chief centers for the people uh, for the formulation and application of folk right were in the 10th and 11th centuries the shire modes, while the whiten of the realm generally place themselves 
on the high round of state expediency, although occasionally using folk right ideas. The older uh, law of real property, property of succession of contracts, the customary tariffs of fines were mainly regulated by folk right. Three ears employed by the king and great men were supposed to take care of local and rural affairs according to folk right. The law had to be declared and applied by the people itself in its communities. This community, uh, law of community, uh, and uh, the law had to be declared and applied by the people itself in its communities, by the people, uh, by the men uh, themselves, uh, 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 while the spokesmen of the people were neither democratic majorities nor individual experts, but a few leading men, the twelve eldest things or some similar quorum. Folk right could, however, be broken or modified by special law or special grant, and the fo uh, fountain of such privileges was the royal power. Mm. Alterations and exceptions were, as a matter of fact, suggested by the interest parties themselves and chiefly by the church. Uh, here will be mined the canon law. Um, uh, thus, uh, a privileged land turner uh, was created. The rules as to the succession of kinsmen were set at, uh, at naught by concession of testamentary power and confirmations of grants and wills. Special exemptions from the jurisdiction of the hundreds and special privileges as to living fines were conferred. In process of time, the rights originating in royal grants of privilege overbalanced uh, as it were forthright in many respects and became themselves the starting point of a new legal system, the feudal one. Um, but this uh, community law this possibility of population to mm, declare and to uh, appeal and to decide how to live, what to do in some difficult uh, cases in relationship with the state, this right, this folk right, this community right is left uh, after the community uh, in uh, a modern mm, Great Britain Kingdom uh, yet. Вы знаете своеобразный референдум по решению вопросов местного значения, причем очень местного значения, локального значения. Грубо говоря, когда сельское поселение обладает таким правом, this uh, community law or large group, law of the large group, да, право крупной социальной единицы. Причем она, uh, this uh, large group or this community is local uh, populated, uh, local uh, territorialized, and uh, is uh, this common, um, this common is one, is non-differenced, не дифференцированный. Uh, either politically, neither uh, uh, religiously, не политически, не религиозно, не социально и так далее. The preservation of peace, uh, preservation of peace will be translated into Russian as uh, стремление к миру, охранение мира. 
То есть мы, исходя из э, западноевропейской традиции, юридической, социальной, политической традиции, коллеги, исходим из того, что любая война заканчивается и стремится к чему? Миру. К миру. Да. То есть это естественное состояние вещей. Мы с вами здесь не обращаемся к древневосточной традиции, поскольку мы не говорим сейчас, не охватываем эти рамки, мы говорим сейчас о особенности англосаксонской системы, и вот вопрос о стремлении к миру, о хранении мира. The preservation of peace. Another feature of vital importance of the history of Anglo-Saxon law is its tendency towards the preservation of peace. Society is constantly struggling to ensure the main condition of its existence, peace. We need, we need this uh, existence. We need this exi existence to live out, to become rich men, to become, uh, to marry, to have a family, to not to be killed, actually. And that is why uh, each war will be ended by the peace. Already in uh, Ethel birth, legislation we find characteristic fines inflicted for breach of the peace of householders of different things the uh, keorl the eorl and the king himself peering at the most exalted among them pieces this uh, existence of peace is considered not so much a state of Uh, equilibrium and friendly relations between parties, but rather as the rule of a third within a certain region, a house, an estate, or a, a kingdom. This uh, leads uh, the, this leads on on side to the recognition of private authorities, the fathers in his family, for example, the masters as the servants the lords as to his personal or territorial dependence. On the other hand, the tendency um, to maintain peace naturally takes its course towards the strongest ruler, the king, and we witness in Anglo-Saxon law the gradual evolution of more and more stringent and complete rules in respect of the king's peace and its infringements. The more ancient documents of Anglo-Saxon uh, law show us, demonstrate us, the individual uh, not merely as the subject and citizen of a certain common world, but also as a member of some group or the fellows of which are closely allied in claims and responsibilities. The most uh, The most, uh, the most elementary of these uh, groups is the um, is the um, is the mag, mag, the association of agnetic and cognetic relations, personal protection and revenge, oath, marriage, wardship, succession, supervision, or uh, over settlement, and good behavior are regulated by the law of kinship. A man's actions are considered not as exertions of his individual will, but as acts of the kindred and all the fellows of the Mac are held responsible for them. What began as a natural alliance was used later as a means of enforcing responsibility and keeping lawless individuals in order. When the association of kinsmen failed, the voluntary associations, guilds, guilds, такое, знаете, новое понятие, гильдии, средневековые, ранее средневековые Англии, мы с вами помним, что именно к Англии мы относим такое фундаментальное базовое понятие 
процесс, я бы сказал, глобальный, процесс как ранней буржуазной революции. Помните, они произошли у нас в Англии, а затем в Нидерландах, и затем уже, собственно, стали происходить в целом в Европе, и в том числе в России. The guild, uh, guilds appeared as substitutes. The guild brothers, the members of these guilds, of these manufacturers, associated in mutual defense and support, and they had to share in the payment of fines. The township and the hundred came also in for certain forms of collective responsibility because they presented groups of people associated in their economic and legal interests. We can, uh, we can, we can see that there is a new background, uh, background for a system of law, uh, economic and legal interests of, uh, uh, of some associated groups, uh, of uh, associated groups uh, in uh, uh, towns and cities of England. In course of time, the natural associations get loosened and intermixed, and this calls forth the elaborate for this legislation of the later Anglo-Saxon kings. Regulations are issued uh, by the sale of cattle in the presence of whiteness. Enactments about the pursuit of uh, thieves and the calling uh, in of warranters of, to uh, justify, first of all, sales of, uh, of cattle are as expressions of the difficulties intending peaceful intercourse. Uh, personal surety appears as a complement uh, uh, compl uh, compl uh, of and substitute for collective responsi uh, responsibility. Uh, the, the blood fort the, uh, uh, and his hired men are institution not only of private patronage, but also of police supervision for the sake of laying hands on malefactors and suspected persons. Mm. To the conclusion of this short lecture about the Anglo-Saxon uh, system of law, I can say that the points mentioned are not many, but apart from the uh, intrinsic importance in any system of law, they are, as it were, made prominent by the documents themselves and they are constantly referred to in the letter. You can see uh, these letters with references with some additions, uh, included modern works, and I hope that uh, you will, in the library or at home, you will try to read some books, some works from this list and on the next uh, lesson we, can, we will be able we all we able uh, we uh, all we uh, all be uh, we will be able to discuss some points from my lecture I am very glad to meet you I would like to wish you, except autumn, best of all. I hope that the exams will be not a problem for you. Thank you. Any questions to me? I can say, my dear friend, that this lesson, this lecture is uh, one of the first lectures at our university and I think that it's very useful not only for us, for your teachers, but for you, our students, uh, when we speak or we tell about the academic students' mobility, not only uh, in our university, uh, but uh, between or among the, uh, the Russian and uh, 
Russian uh, universities, I think that you will be able to go to another university to have a lessons, uh, a lesson or some lessons there to the Britain or German universities for more than one or three months, perhaps. And, uh, it, and the third, it is, I think, a good, uh, a very good uh, chance for, for us to practice our language, not only at the faculty of foreign languages. I think you discuss at the faculty some points like where the um, culture, what else? What do you discuss on your lessons at the faculty? What points, what topics? But this topic, this uh, point is, I think, new point. Thank you. And I hope we will meet in the nearest future and discuss this, uh, the questions uh, connect, uh, connected to uh, this topic, I mean, in the system of law. Thank you.